Hello and welcome to this Inspired Life. My name is Andy Taylor and in this video we're talking about a couple of subjects. The first of which comes into a category that I would describe as goal setting fundamentals. Now if you've watched any of my previous videos you will know that I'm not a big fan of the G word. It just doesn't work for me and I did an entire video as to why that was and what I do to overcome that. So, you know, feel free to check that one out if, if, you, if you are uh, in the same situation where you just can't seem to reach your goals, then, you know, it might be worth checking that one out because there are a couple of reasons I mentioned in that video as to why that was the case for me and what I did to overcome that. Now, for the sake of this video, what we're talking about is not that per se, but it's a fundamental part of the whole goal setting mythology almost. Um, and we're going back some time as to when this first was pervasive in goal setting and personal development, but it's never really gone away. And you can still to this day find gurus or so-called gurus and people that frankly should know better teaching you this particular method of, of setting goals. And there are all kinds of amateur videos and amateur content online from people who aren't actually trained coaches who will teach you this and say this because they read it in a book somewhere. And it gives them the authority, obviously, to go out on social media and tell you what they think. So this particular, the, the particular topic is that of if then goals. Okay, so I'm talking about what we're told or what we were told decades ago when it, when goal setting first became a big popular thing about um, if I achieve such and such then I will be happy or then I will be content or then I will be uh, lovable or whatever it is. And it was actually, it was probably bigger in the relationship and dating market than it was in the general success and achievement field because it was always one of those things where if I change my wardrobe, then I'll be attractive. If I change my haircut, then I'll be attractive. It doesn't work like that. And that's a big, to me, it's a big, big myth. It's a big no-no. You know, if anyone comes to me and says, I'm setting goals, I say, well, how do you set your goals? That's the first question I ask is, right, Somebody comes and says, I'm not achieving my goals, I'm really concerned, I'm getting quite down about it, blah, blah, blah. The first question I've got is, how are you setting them? What is your process? And as soon as they tell me, generally speaking, if, it's, if it ever involves the words if and then, it's a, it's a case of, right, no, you need to stop that shit right now because that's what's killing you. And it is, it kills so much because you are putting your happiness or your lovability or whatever the then aspect of it is so let's for example say if I have a million dollars in the if I earn a million dollars in the bank then I'll be successful or then I'll be happy your success and happiness you have basically just thrown that out into the world and given responsibility for it over to someone else or some other force okay so if I make a million dollars, then I'll be happy. Your happiness is then dependent on something which is, by and large, nothing to do with you because you could set up a business. You could do everything you need to do. So you could set up a business and you could have the best product in the world. But if other people don't buy it, you're not going to make your million dollars, are you? So you've essentially put your happiness in someone else's hands. Now, in relationships, it's a slightly different story, but again, it's still pervasive and it's still damaging uh, because you're basically saying, you know, if I change my look, then I'll be attractive or then I'll be lovable. You're basically saying that your, your attractiveness, your level of attract attractiveness as you see you is superficial, right? That's essentially what you're saying by that, is the fact that if I change my haircut, then I'll be attractive or then I'll be lovable. Your lovability and your attractiveness, you've basically just made the statement with that goal-setting process of, you know, if I change my haircut, then I will be attractive. You've put that over, you've basically thrown a big spanner in your own works there because you've just basically said that 
you know, if I become attractive, if, if, sorry, if I change my haircut, then I'll become attractive. Your level of attractiveness is all that matters. And it's all superficial, is essentially what you said. So it, it just completely dismisses and ignores everything inside you that makes you the amazing, wonderful person that you are. And that's just sad, I'm afraid. That's just, so, why would you do that? Why would you do that to yourself? Seriously, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. The if-then goal is something that crops up from time to time. I mean, I'm glad to say that it's not as pervasive as it used to be, but it's certainly more, more pervasive than it should be. Given where we are in, human, in the, the arena of human understanding and the way that the human brain works and the way that we psychology, psychologically function, I would hope that we would be way beyond this by this point, but we're, we're not, clearly. So it still comes up for a lot of people. So what I would say is avoid doing that at all costs because goal setting as a, as a technique in this, this period of time, the traditional way of goal setting is severely broken because by and large you are setting yourself up for, for failure almost. Because you've got techniques, you've got if then, and then on the other side of that, you've got something again I've spoken about at length in a previous video about my disdain and dislike for smart goals. Okay, so smart goals, for those of you who aren't aware, it depends who you talk to as to what this actually stands for. It's an acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time framed. Okay, there's some variation in that depending on who you talk to, as I say. But if you go by that definition of it, there are three elements to it that I have no issue with at all. And in fact, they are crucial to any kind of self-development and personal achievement and success, right? So specific, yes, absolutely yes. Be specific, be as clear as you can be. Be as specific as you can be. Give yourself the benefit of being in, of setting your sights on something in as much clear, vivid detail as you can possibly be and you're good to go. Uh, and there's a reason for that, which I'll go into in a moment, but measurable, yeah. I mean, yeah, I can't I agree with that one too, because you need to be able to know that you're making progress. As small as that is, you need to know when you've hit progress. And the next two are where we get, where we get to my bit of nah uh, for SMART goals, because achievable or attainable, what that does by default is it triggers our brain. When we're trying to think of something, when you're sitting down to set goals, it's all very exciting. You get to dream about your future and think about this. Attainable or achievable and realistic, those two right there in the middle, bad, so bad. They are so damaging to so many people. And I just wish people would stop using the bastard things because they are so, so detrimental to you and your ability to succeed and get to where you want to go. Because when you think about it, the brain is a very simple, it's, it's a very, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of paradoxical, but it's a very simple, complex system. In as much as it will only go by what it knows. If you tell it to think of something that's realistic or achievable, it is by default going to use its own experiences and your own experiences up to this point in time to identify what is achievable for you or what is attainable for you based on what you've achieved and attained in the past. Same with realistic. I mean, your definition of realistic and my definition of realistic, two vastly different things, right? For me, you know, it's, it's, oh, it's just the, the, achain, the achievable, attainable, realistic element of SMART goals really get my goat because you are, you are basically hamstringing yourself. You are, you're essentially entering into an Olympic sprint by tying one leg behind your back. And that's never going to end well because when you, when you, like I say, when you set, when you set goals, if you want to use that terminology, and I'll, you know, I'll bear with you, but when you want, to, sorry, when you want to set achievable, attainable, realistic goals, you are automatically, by default, 
allowing your brain to tap into its own experiences, right? And its own understanding. So it takes into consider, it basically opens up a whole new arena of potentially damaging stuff. Because even realistic, I know some people would say, well, you've got access to autobiographies, you've got examples from other people. That's all good and well, but again, it's only as good as the awareness you have. And that's when we get to the key word in everything that I do. It's about awareness. So if your awareness is very shallow and it's very limited as to success stories, if, if people that have done what you want to do, if your awareness of them is very limited or the accessibility is very limited, so are your goals going to be. Because unless you've got this super duper archive of every single success story ever throughout history, you're not going to go beyond what you know. So what your brain has already picked up on, whether it's from experience or whether it's from learning and knowledge and understanding and examples, you're not going to get far because, <clears throat> excuse me, you're never going to go outside of that zone that you've created with your knowledge base and your experience. That's as simple as it, it, that's as simple as it gets. So the reason I have an issue with that is the fact that we all have unlimited potential. And with that unlimited potential comes unlimited opportunities and unlimited possibilities. Okay, so we can do so much more than we think we're capable of. We can achieve so much more than we think we're capable of. Our past experience does not, does not indicate our, potential, our future for potential success. Not even close, right? Because, you've, because things have not worked out up to now doesn't mean to say they're not going to work out tomorrow or the next day or the week after, right? You've just got to keep faith in yourself. It's not about religious connotations either. When I say keep faith, I mean believe. Believe in you. Believe in the power that you have inside you. And believe in your potential. Believe in your vast ability to create in the world your own reality your own idea of what you want reality to be for you that's what i'm talking about when i say believe it's nothing religious at all and it just it, and it does actually lead neatly into the second thing i wanted to talk about which was the fact that we have everything that we could ever possibly need to achieve anything we could ever possibly want to achieve right here inside us because you either already know what you need to know or you have the ability to learn it. Now I'm going to give you a real simple analogy and a real simple example to just go away with and think about because it's like baking a cake. Okay? You want to bake a cake. You have to get the you have you have to know what ingredients to get, you know, you have to crack an egg. You have to know how to put the ingredients together. You know, have, to, have to know how to mix it, right? There are two different types of, uh, of ways to mix cake ingredients, depending on the type of cake. Some are with your hands and some are with a spoon or a mixer, right? But let's say any one of those aspects, let's break it down as simply as possible, okay? Get your, you know, know the ingredients that you need. Know how to crack an egg. Know how to put the ingredients in a bowl. Know how to mix it and know how long to put it in the oven for and what type of tin. Okay, five simple things. So let's say you know three of those, but two, what temperature do I put it in and what type of tin do I use? Google that shit. We live in an amazing period in history in as much as we have access at our fingertips to as any amount of information we can possibly intake on a vast range of subjects, pretty much every topic is covered at this point in time on the internet. You want to know how to teach a parrot to talk? Google that shit. You'll, you'll find something. You want to know how to teach a parrot to you, ride a unicycle on a tightrope? You'll be able to find that too. I guarantee it. Right? Anything you can think of, anything at all, and you have the ability to 
learn it if you haven't already done so. And that's the crucial part, and that's what I went to. That's what I touched on at the, 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 the end of the, the first part of this about um, the if then goals and my little rant was the fact that, you know, we live in, you know, if your view of the world is your limitations of what you know, then you're pretty much hosed because you're never going to grow beyond the confines of your own consciousness, your own awareness. And it's, it's a, you know, there's, there's an amazing, there's so, there's so many amazing examples in nature. Hermit crabs, right? Hermit crabs will never grow beyond the size of their own tank. Okay? If you provide them with a bigger shell, they will grow to fit that bigger shell. But otherwise, they won't. Their terrapins and tortoises are the same. They will stop growing. If they're in a, an, a, a terrarium that's a certain size, they will not grow beyond that environment until you set them free, and then they'll grow, right? There's so many wonderful examples in nature, and we are the same. Psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, okay? Physically, we just keep growing. That's, that's, that's just how it is, but every other aspect, every, every other way, our spirit, our soul, our, our heart, our ability to love, our consciousness, our awareness, we, we limit ourselves, we can limit ourselves, and that's the saddest part about it, is the fact that we use past experiences to limit ourselves and create this confined space out of which we will not grow beyond. Okay, so our, our own level of awareness and consciousness when it comes to goal setting um, is just, it's just, it can be the killer. If you're not prepared to increase your awareness and to learn and to develop and to understand more, then your smart goal setting process is going to screw you over because you are setting goals based on your own limitations. And that's just how that works. So you can set SMART goals. By all means, if it's what floats your boat, then go for it. But just be aware that that is what's happening, at least for the, the achievable, realistic, and attainable elements of it, depending on who you listen to. Because if, you're not, if you don't acknowledge that fact, what I've just said about that it limiting us and it limiting your ability to grow beyond it, then you're constantly going to be in a state of struggle when it comes to goal setting. You're going to have all these really wild ideas, but they're never going to get you anywhere because your own conscious awareness, your own awareness, your own emotional awareness is going to limit you to what you perceive you know and your level of awareness and consciousness. It's just how it is. And when we begin, when we open up to the possibility of being more aware of ourselves, of the world, of other people, then we, we just open up the world, world of opportunity and possibility. Because when you genuinely and heartfelt open that shit up, when you open up your awareness, you can, you can just, you can do anything. You can achieve anything. And it's like I said in the second half of this video when we were talking about the fact that you have everything you need inside you. It is actually one of the tenets of NLP. It's one of the foundational principles of NLP, which is, for those who don't know, neuro-linguistic programming. And its foundational principle is the fact that you either know or have the ability to learn anything that you need in order to get what you want. And that's so, so true. And it just, it just, it would just be so wonderful to see more people aware of that and to actually embrace it, not just know about it, but actually embrace it and make it part of who they are. Because when you make it a part of who you are, life becomes easier. Goals complete themselves, they fulfill themselves, you will be nailing your projects and objectives way beyond 
way be well, way beyond, way before you imagined you would, and to such a, a higher degree and higher level than you ever thought possible. Because that is just literally what, how, the, how the brain works, it's how we function, it's what we are all about, is the fact that when our awareness increases, so do our opportunities, so do the possibilities become endless. So, like I said, that's, that's a twofer for today, because it's a kind of link. So I wanted to, to put them all both out there today in one video, and I hope it's been useful. I really hope you get value from it, because it's really quite critical. If you, if you want to use um, goal-setting techniques, that's fine. I have no problem with you using goal-setting techniques. I don't personally use them, and I don't personally uh, you know, like the word goal, but it, hey, if it works for you, it works for you. And that's what we're all about at the end of the day, is giving you information, giving you a variety of information and ideas that you can take away and just choose which ones work for you. So if you're a smart goal setter, then go for your life. Because, you know, if you have the level of awareness, you have the increased level of awareness, then you are not going to be restricted as much. There will still be some restrictions, that's just how smart goals work, unfortunately, with the achievable and realistic. All right, so just know that as you go about your goal setting day. And I hope to see you very soon in the next video. Please hit the subscribe button on the channel. It helps a lot. And uh, the notification bell as well. And then you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. And I look forward to speaking to you again very, very soon.